information. So I want to start with uh, something that we usually see as our, almost like a homepage. These are all the scopes that we internally build and maintain. Some of them are open source scopes for betas and open source. Some of them are for the proprietary engine that drives speed cloud. As you see, each scope is essentially a specific business domain. Part of them are the base React functionalities we provide, a scope that deals just with components, scope that contains our design system. Eventually with this, we have this ecosystem or system of components where different components are sorted according to their domains in uh, various scopes. Each scope also has ownership by a specific team or several developers, either it's a product team, uh, delivery team, marketing team, even design teams, and so on. So we also achieve component level of code ownership even in that regard. And I like to zoom into some of the scopes to really highlight uh, what it means. We have components from different stacks maintained in, uh, in the same scope. So the first website that uh, hopefully you all already are aware of is the uh, community slash documentation website. All of the components that we build that deal with the community management aspect of BIT, uh, community site documentation site, are all here. So you can see that the community site as a whole is, it's, is a separate component. Uh, for some reason, the rendering will probably not work here, but BitDev, again, the community site is here, the different composition that render it. It's its own standalone component. Um, I can even browse the source code for this component, understand dependencies, and install it as a dependency for any of my project. We have also a lot of the UI functionalities that deal with building that website, different hooks, plugins, routing capabilities, and, and even basic components like the hero and different graphs that only are available in this place. By building the community site in this fashion with those components, any other project that needs to have access and build something maybe similar or that just need to use something from the community site can do that. This way, the community site as a whole also provides services as components to other products. Another scope that we use internally, and this is actually a feature that we're about to roll up, uh, is analytics. We also do a lot of behind the scenes analytics on uh, on bit, on how components are used, on how we are even operate internally. And each of those components, either different charts, uh, different stuff around Google Analytics, Tag Manager, uh, even specific dashboards that we use are maintained by a specific team that provides analytics widgets as services for other application builders throughout. So it's not only that we build our internal dashboard component and, and dashboard capabilities, but all of the other widgets are also atomic independent components that can be reused and build more capabilities around that. So sometimes if you see me even uh, show different slides that have graphs, I may just took the graphs from here and, and build them into different features. You can also use those components to build different analytics reports on your components um, and get more fine-tuned understanding of what's going on. Another scope that is also another end-to-end like, -end functionality is our blog itself. So the BitCloud uh, blog, it is itself a component but it also includes a lot of other components that may also be relevant for a lot of other marketing references. So for example, a, uh, a UI element, almost like a microphone and that deals with registering to our newsletter is a component. We can just we implement that as part of our blog, but we can pull that as a dependency and put this in any application that we want how we you know, manage the UI for the blog, different types, uh, hooks, entities, uh, back and for the blog operation as a whole is also managed in a single scope. And uh, the last scope I want to zoom into, which is something that's more internal to BIT itself, is MDX. So it's not only about implementing UI capabilities with BIT. MDX, if you're aware of, it's an open source platform that allows to embed React inside Markdown. Uh, and at BIT, we've built a lot of wrappers and features around this capability. And in order to provide MDX compilation or loading MDX in different areas, we had to build components that abstract away a lot of the complexities of doing that to MDX and provide those as services for other tools. So for example, even our blog 
would uh, that is driven by MDX, we essentially uh, use those components and those capabilities as features. So we don't have to rewrite the same implementation and we just think about it again, very much like a scope is a microservice and the different APIs in that microservice are components. And the interesting part is that those APIs can be UI APIs like React or Angular components, uh, backend APIs like utilities, they can actually be a full stack application or microservice, serverless function, cloud workers, and so on. Now, how this impact our day-to-day -day flow? I want to jump quickly to, to a dev environment real quick. So let's start by creating a new React uh, project that's called a webinar demo. Now, what I want to show here is in bit, each of these components um, contain its own revision history, its own configuration. Um, and the bits dynamic workspace harness this. So I can pull the components I actually need to work on right now, modify them, export new versions for them, or suggest changes on each component level. So as I build different applications, I can actually get started and modify and iterate on code, almost like it's a virtual monorepo instead of just having you know a very blanket piece of uh, project that I have here, because here there, at the moment there is no code, there is nothing that I actually use. Let's say that I want to create a new application. So what I'll do, and I'm sorry that here my binary name would be pbit and not bit. That's because I'm using local build of bit, so it's a different link. Uh, so I will run bit, create React app, and let's call it my demo app. And um, this essentially creates a new application, a new component that is actually an application. Uh, and to use that component as an application, just while we are here, uh, what I want to do is quickly run bit use to load this component as an app to my workspace JSON. And now I can just run bit install. I think I need React router DOM because usually all of our applications are built in with, uh, they expect some routing agent to be involved. I'm gonna run bit compile to make sure all of my components are properly compiled, all my component, and bit app list. Let's see if I'm able to load my application. All right, so bit run my demo app. Uh, whenever you have component as an application, this can be a microservice, a service function, uh, a React or Angular application. The same command is being is used to spin up those apps. All right, let's have a look at what's going on here. So I want to go here and let's go to 4001. And there's a small React application that says, hello world. Now I want to add our header into the mix, but I may want to optimize and change the header. So let's start by finding the uh, main default header that we have. Uh, and I just happen to know that it's inside the design scope for my team because this is the scope that essentially we use to standardize um, all of our UI development. You can think about this more like a design system. Quickly jump in and get our header. And instead of just um, bit install a component, in this case, what I want to do is I want to import this component because I know that I may want to do some changes into the component because uh, there's a new feature I also need to write. So I'm gonna copy the bit import command. Uh, you will have to excuse me for killing the dev server. We'll get started with this later. So I run bit import for uh, the header. And essentially what happened now is my workspace grows by just a little bit. Instead, I, instead of uh, only installing dependency, what I essentially do is I bring in the, the implementation of our header. Uh, so yes, I can still use it as a dependency for an application, but I also have access to the actual code of the header. So if I want to use it, if I want to change it, I can. My application sits right here, that's my app. And you see here design blocks header. This is our actual header as it sits, as it found from the remote scope. Uh, it's not just a dependency. The entire component is here. I can modify it. I can do any operations on it while not being forced to work in the same full context where this header was implemented. So 
let's start by adding uh, the header into the Envoy application. So we'll just import uh, header. Sorry about that. From at inbit design header, and we'll just place it here. And we'll place header. And we'll, let's open the terminal window for a second. It's a uh, list, forgive me, I forgot the name of the app. And it run my demo app. Okay, so on localhost 3001, localhost 301, let's see. I may need to recompile and do something that out of whack on my local. Sorry about that. Anyway, in the meanwhile, um, if on my feature, those also requirements to change and update the header, I can do it right here. And um, even as I want to, let's see, that should load. All right, so we see that our header is also loaded here as a component. If I want to create other components and extend our ecosystem of components, like let's say that I want to create a new hero component for myself, right? So what I can do quickly from the same workspace as I just imported a component from a remote, I can bit create another component, right? I can recreate my um, webinar hero component. So create React webinar hero component. Sorry about that. There's some stuff going on with my terminal. It create React webinar hero. And this way, I quickly create a new component. This component will already be tied to a specific place in my organization or my scope. I can already use it in my application. So I have this component already here. Uh, I can render this in my application in its own page or a new route uh, and just direct to it. And when I'm done, this component that I quickly created here will also be an asset in my growing ecosystem of, uh, of different assets that um, other developers for my organization, for my team can already um, get started to use. And uh, I hope I was able to give you a very quick and brief uh, understanding of how we are taking the component ecosystem that we've built over the years and kind of slowly and slowly kind of build out uh, features as components, share them through it, and growing a lot and, and ever and adding to an ever growing um, set of components. So later on, it becomes much easier and much simpler for all developers and even some of non or novice developers actually build very complex applications because at the end of the day, if we build a very concrete component that solves a uh, business problem that we have, it becomes that much easier uh, to compose that functionality in other application. Uh, so it's not about you know boiling the ocean, start building everything from scratch with components. Getting started with bit can be as simple as Let's just create the one component that we need right now and export that and reuse that component instead of uh, trying to rethink how do I build everything, right? Uh, maybe there's a new feature or an enhancement for an existing application or capability that we can look into and see how we can take that feature and put it as a component for other teams to use. Uh, whether this is a Node component, Angular component, React component, and other. Essentially, this dev experience that we have built for ourselves, it's very much focused on composition of components that implement solved business problems into other applications. And as we find new business problems via new features we need to implement or uh, fixes that we need to do for other uh, components, or even sometimes as we go and refactor a component, we understand that it does too much and maybe we need to split another component from it. And this is kind of how we got to a point where all of our business, and you can see all the, all the open source work that we have done in the past, is sorted in different scopes. Each of these scopes uh, 
has its own set of functionality baked in as a microservice. If you need to depend on one, you can just pull it as a dependency. Uh, you can just pull the component if, and we suggest changes on components directly. And we kind of build this workflow around the idea of a component solving a business problem and we can go and iterate on that problem ever and ever again. And it's just a dependency to be composed for other larger problems. Behind the scenes, we actually have about 3,000 components that maintain all of our own internal code base. And with that, we are able to build about 15 different applications. All of those components are full stack, so back and front and CLI for Bit itself, Cloudflare workers, like even the, again, even the Bit CLI, how funny it sounds, is also maintained as a component and is versioned with Bit as well. And it's a very robust, complicated component that built by a lot of other smaller ones.